I've been super excited to make this review since the X1 Carbon has always been my favorite laptop. I'll try to stay as objective as possible though. Instead of rushing, I took my time because I wanted to use the Gen 12 daily for work and other stuff like watching videos, writing script. Another reason I wanted to take my time is that I already did a first impressions video on this laptop back in January, but I couldn't test its performance or battery back then. Now I can finally give this laptop a thorough review. I don't like wasting anyone's time, therefore if you just want to have a quick overview of X Phone Carbon Gen 12, go check out this video, otherwise sit back, relax and enjoy this deep dive review. Make sure to use video bookmarks to skip to the topic you are most interested in. Of course the Gen 12 was highly anticipated as it's the first major redesign of the X1 Carbon in years. Naturally, whenever Lenovo introduces a new innovations or significant improvements to their ThinkPad lineup, the community tends to be divided. Some praise the changes and have no issues with them, while others who prefer the ThinkPads of the IBM era are less pleased. I personally believe in innovation, but only when it truly benefits the user and it isn't just a gimmick. So let's start with the design as this is where we see the most noticeable changes. The X1 Carbon Gen 12 is impressively thin, measuring just 14.9 millimeters and the weight starts at only 1.08 kilos. In terms of materials, it uses aluminium for the bottom and the carbon fiber for the top, giving it a premium and durable feel. Moving on to notch and the camera. So something that's immediately noticeable even when the laptop is closed is the notch bump on the lid. Its primary purpose besides being a distinctive feature of modern ThinkPads is to house a dual microphone array webcam and AR blaster for Windows Hello all while keeping the lid as thin as possible. This brings us to the topic of the webcam. The Carbon Gen 12 finally drops the HD option, meaning you now have a choice between an FHD 1080p or UHD 8 megapixel camera, both with AR capability and of course the physical privacy shutter. Okay, so this is what the camera on the X1 Carbon Gen 12 look like and this is what the mic sounds like. I'm not sure guys, I'm, I'm using the studio light here, so pretty much ideal lighting conditions, but my face look a bit too orange I would say and my hair, they almost look grayish, which is and the beer too, which is very strange. So there's some weird over sharpening happening here. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it does look better than most uh, laptop webcams out there, but not the best, definitely not the best. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Windows Hello worked most of the time, but it did struggle to recognize my face on several occasions, which can be frustrating if you are in a hurry. Overall, I don't mind this notch trend. I think it helps keep the overall design clean. And as I mentioned before, it's now a signature Lenovo feature present not only on ThinkPad laptops. Before we'll talk about this gorgeous display, I need to tell you a secret. Typically, I shoot this kind of reviews with my Sony A7 or Sony A6700, but this review has been partially shot on my iPhone 15 Pro Max, and that's mainly thanks to company called CraftGeek, who provided this fantastic MagSafe tripod called MagStand. With its sturdy, robust build, this tripod is still light enough to carry around easily. It extends up to an impressive 164 centimeters and features a 180 degree tilt and 360 degree rotation, making it an incredibly versatile for all your content creation needs. Plus, it comes with a detachable Bluetooth remote control with a 10 meter range. Get yours now via the link in the video description below and get the 15% of the price when you use code Bernard. Thanks again to CraftGeek for sponsoring this segment. Right, back to X1 Carbon. When we look at the display, the first thing that stands out is the 
thinner bezels all around, which is a welcome improvement over the Gen 11. Not only it is more aesthetically pleasing, but it's also a practical change as the overall footprint of the laptop is now smaller. Now let's talk about panel itself. You can choose between the FHD Plus IPS with either 400 or 500 nits of brightness and a 60Hz refresh rate or my personal favorite the 2.8K OLED with 120Hz of refresh rate. That's right, the X1 Carbon finally goes beyond 60Hz and the 2.8K resolution is a much better option than 4K on 14-inch laptop for two simple reasons, better battery life and still incredibly sharp visuals. This panel is fantastic, offering great viewing angles, vivid colors and accurate color reproduction. The 120Hz refresh rate really enhances the responsiveness of Windows 11 and makes the UI elements feel much smoother. You can always switch back to 60Hz to extend battery life. My only criticism is that the 400 nits of brightness on the OLED variant isn't quite enough when working on the go. I've used this laptop outdoors a lot over the past few weeks and I struggled with visibility. I would really love to see a brighter panel in the future. Oh, and this panel is also touch enabled if that's something you find useful. The changes continue with the keyboard. If you compare the Gen 11 keyboard to the new Gen 12, you will immediately notice something different. The FN and control keys have been swapped. That's right, after all these years, Lenovo has decided to attract users from Dell HP, Apple and other brands by making this significant change among others. And yes, this swap will affect all the ThinkPad laptops moving forward. But don't worry, you can easily swap them back in Lenovo OneTouch and ignore the new labeling if you prefer. Do I hate this change? Not at all. As someone who uses various laptops including MacBooks, my muscle memory actually appreciates this switch. However, I can imagine that many loyal ThinkPad users might be upset by this. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. There is also another subtle change. Lenovo has added incremental tactile markings for improved discoverability and usability, particularly for the visually impaired. Enhancements like this are always welcome. If you pay a close attention, you might have noticed that the power button has been moved from the top of the keyboard area to the right side of the laptop. As a result, there is now a dedicated fingerprint reader right next to the control key and the print screen key has been moved to the function row. I'm not a fan of this change, not only because the fingerprint reader now permanently occupies the key position on the keyboard, but also because you can no longer log in and power on your laptop simultaneously. First, you need to turn on or wake up the X1 Carbon, which to be fair can also be done by simply lifting the lid and then awkwardly place your finger on the reader. Personally, I prefer having an all-in-one solution. That said, this is still a very solid and true ThinkPad keyboard and it's always joy to use. The keyboard is also spill resistant and features an air intake design which I think is pretty neat. This review was mostly produced on this X1 Carbon Gen 12 including research and script writing. Pretty much everything except for the video editing was done on this PC, even the thumbnail for the video using Photoshop. If you thought swapping the FN and control keys was the most controversial change to the X1 Carbon, wait until you see this. The X1 Carbon Gen 12 can now be configured with a haptic trackpad. That's right, this might be the biggest change to the ThinkPad trackpad in the last decade or even longer. But before you start criticizing this new option, remember that it's just that, an option. You can still choose the traditional trackpad with three physical click pads. And keep in mind, Apple has been using haptic trackpads for almost a decade now. Fortunately, this haptic trackpad is excellent. The palm rejection is fantastic and you can adjust the level of haptic feedback. This is one of the few Windows laptops that can comfortably use with just a trackpad. Honestly, if you have a chance, give it a try. It's very, very good. And it also helps to keep the overall keyboard area much cleaner and more modern. For those who prefer more traditional input, 
the track point is still here. It can even be used to access the new track point quick menu, which is designed to work as a shortcut for various options. However, there's a problem. The initial animation of the shortcut takes so long that it virtually defeats the purpose and it often fails to recognize my double tap gesture. The speakers and its placement have also been completely redesigned. If you watch my other laptop reviews, you know it's rare to find a Windows laptop with a great sounding speakers. However, the Gen 12 really steps up its game with its superb audio quality. The sound is clear, pleasant and finally has a deep bass. That said, I do miss the two side speaker grills as the space now feels somewhat underutilized. One reason why the sound isn't muffled and achieves such a high quality is that it also uses the keyboard perforations to enhance sound distribution. This unit here, which I I've been testing for a few months now is equipped with a sensible Intel Core Ultra 7 16.5U. However, you can opt for a more powerful but also more power hungry Core Ultra 7 16.5H. The H series can cause the fans of the Gen 12 to spin faster, making the laptop louder and warmer. It also comes with a 64 gigs of LPDDR5X RAM running at 6400 Hz, which is soldered on the motherboard, a design choice expected in a chassis this thin. For the storage, the X1 Carbon Gen 12 is equipped with a 2TB SSD. For those interested, the Meteor Lake platform in this model supports a whopping 11 tops. So yeah, moving on. Before jumping into synthetic benchmarks, let's talk about battery life. To test it, I simply timed how long the laptop lasted from 100 to 0% during my typical workday, which includes using Microsoft 365 writing scripts, doing research, photo editing and other everyday tasks. I set the performance mode to balanced, avoided local video playback and kept Wi-Fi on and used almost full brightness with a heavy workload, including a few Microsoft Teams calls. The result? A solid 4 hours and 8 minutes, which I think is quite respectable. This model has a less power-hungry U-series CPU, but I can imagine that the more powerful H-series might struggle a bit more when running off the charger. So these are real-life numbers. I've of course done more than one test and results were always similar. Just before we look at some synthetic benchmarks, let's look inside. We can see that RAM is soldered as mentioned before. The only thing that's actually upgradable here is SSD, which is very easy. All you need to do is loosen four self-retaining screws. We can also see a completely redesigned thermal design, including larger fans, which are now further apart from each other. Now, after the hype died a bit and Lenovo had plenty of time release driver updates, BIOS updates and other fixes, we should be able to get comprehensive picture about Gen 12 performance. So let's see how this puppy performs. Cinebench R23. Geekbench 6. PC Mark 10. It's clear that the redesign extends beyond just the visible components. The entire cooling system has been re-engineered. The thermal envelope has been increased, making the system less likely to throttle. The fans are now larger and positioned further apart, which helps reduce noise levels. Although some noise still persists. Here are the noise levels I measured while running benchmarks. The port selection on the X1 Carbon Gen 12 remains solid, especially for such a thin and light laptop. Even in 2024, it retains the essential ports needed for typical day-to-day -day use. The laptop offers two USB-A ports, two USB-C ports, both supporting Thunderbolt 4, an HDMI 2.1 port and a headphone jack. Additionally, my unit includes nano SIM card slot, which is fantastic for those who work on the go and need a cellular connectivity. Only downside perhaps is the lack of USB-C port on the right side, which can be inconvenient for certain charging situations. However, this is a minor criticism in otherwise well-rounded port configuration. The ThinkPad 
X1 Carbon Gen 12 introduces numerous changes, while some might not be immediately noticeable and others might seem a bit controversial, I believe that most of these changes and improvements are beneficial and will be even more appreciated over time once people get used to it. However, there are areas that need more attention, specifically battery life, fan noise and performance. So I've been thinking about this laptop for a good few weeks and I'm convinced that many of these issues could be addressed by introducing ARM64 architecture in the X1 Carbon. Of course, this would bring compatibility challenges, but for majority of ThinkPad users who primarily use Microsoft 365, Zoom and other mainstream software, the benefits of longer battery life and quieter system would be significant. Who knows, maybe one day. Overall, the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 12 is a solid, premium, ultra-thin laptop, suitable not just for business users. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it took me three months to produce and some of the sections had to be fully re-recorded because I lost my recordings, including this talking head video. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please let me know your feedback down below in the comment section and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.